to all of our listeners and viewers around the country and around the world. With the main health care reform bill signed into law, Democrats say congressional efforts to reform Wall Street and the nation's financial regulatory system will soon top the Obama administration's agenda. On Wednesday, the president held a strategy meeting at the White House with Senate Banking Committee Chairman Christopher Dodd and House Financial Services Committee Chair B Barney Frank. The meeting came two days after the Senate Banking Committee advanced Dodd's measure to overhaul financial regulation on a party-line vote. Dodd spoke to reporters after Wednesday's meeting. We intend to get a strong uh, financial reform package. We're going to end too big to fail. And never again are American taxpayers going to be asked to bail out a failing financial institution because they have an implicit guarantee from the federal government. We're going to have a strong consumer protection agency so that people can, can count on someone watching out for their interests on mortgages and credit cards and other financial activities. We want to have that systemic risk council so we have a good radar system to pick up problems before they challenge and threaten the entire financial system. Uh, in our country, we want strong statements and strong regulations on dealing with exotic instruments like over-the-counter derivatives and others that can put our system at risk. I think the American people expect us uh, to address the largest and most significant financial crisis since the Great Depression, caused by a collapse in our financial system, either because regulators didn't do their job or there were no cops on the beat at all, and certainly uh, in unregulated activities that contributed to this mess. Meanwhile, Congressman Barney Frank said the issue of financial regulatory reform will be Congress's number one concern after a two-week Easter break. The Dodd bill has been described as the biggest overhaul of financial rules since the 1930s. The measure includes new regulations of derivatives, new protections and incentives for Wall Street whistleblowers, and the establishment of an oversight body for credit rating agencies. But critics have faulted Dodd's proposal for giving additional power to the Federal Reserve while gutting the proposed consumer financial financial protection agency and housing it inside the Fed. Economists are also divided over whether the bill is enough to address the too-big-to-fail banking problem. To talk more about reforming Wall Street, we're joined by two guests. Rob Johnson is a former economist at the Senate Banking Committee and the Senate Budget Committee. He's now the director of the Economic Policy Initiative at the Franklin and Eleanor Roosevelt Institute. Kai Wright is the editorial director at Color Lines Magazine and a fellow at the Nation Institute. We welcome you both to Democracy Now! Kai Wright, let's begin with you. Uh, this whole issue of this consumer agency agency that was, or the one that's being now put into the Fed. Uh, explain it. What's happened to it? Well, the idea was to create um, somebody in Washington who is explicitly tasked with looking out for consumers. Um, there's the, the authority already exists, but um, the, the whole host of regulators that are there, their concern has been with the health of the banking sector, not with their customers. Um, and so the idea was to create an agency that had broad authority. Um, and that was independent. Um, that was where we started probably about a year ago. What um, we have in, uh, in Senator Dodd's bill is an, it, it is an agency that, or it's a bureau that has broad authority so it can police the large banks and it can police the, the non-bank players, payday lenders and the mortgage brokers that peddled these subprime loans. Um, but it's not independent. It's, uh, it is inside the Fed, um, and it has uh, a, 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 an oversight board that is made up of the very regulators who failed to act for the last decade um, can overrule uh, its decisions. And so uh, there, there's a question about— Why does this matter to you? Well, because the, the, the bottom line is that the consumers were the kindling for this fire in the first instance. Um, if, if, if somebody had been able to stop— uh, the the predatory products that they were peddling in neighborhoods all over the country, particularly these subprime loans, then and, and frankly before the subprime loans, all the things that drove up credit and debt to lead consumers to be vulnerable for these subprime loans, then we would have never gotten this far down the road. And there were people who saw it at the time, but they didn't have the power to act. And so we need to create somebody who has the power to act. Well, what does the legislation do in terms of actual real teeth in, in regulation of uh, of these kinds of loans? Well, the, so the bureau that will be inside the Fed um, will have the ability to write and enforce new rules. Um, so they can see uh, a, a new product coming and say, hey, that's a predatory product. You have to, you can't do that, or you have to do it this way. The problem is that the oversight board, which will be made up of, you know, Secretary Geithner and the chair, head chair of the Fed and all of the, all of the, the existing bank regulators, um, has the ability to say, no, you can't do that. 
Um, and so, to the degree that you have a really strong head um, of this bureau, you know, that person will stand up and fight. But the minute you don't have a strong head, then you've got just another bureau that has no power. Rob Johnson, you were the chief economist on the Senate Banking Committee. The significance of the shift from being independent to being inside the Fed and what this overall means. Well, it's enormously significant. It's designed to neuter the Consumer Financial Protection Initiative. You put it inside the Fed, and the Fed's primary responsibility is safety and soundness of large financial institutions, protecting the system from the kind of failure we just had. They need to collect information from those large banks. If those large banks are angry with them, they'll have a fight on their primary mission, and it's certain that the consumer financial protection frontier will anger those banks. So the missions are incompatible. It should not be inside the Fed. And furthermore, the Fed should not be rewarded for the kind of failure it did in supervision examination and its role in the unfolding crisis. And in terms of the overall bill, especially on the situation of dealing with the banks that uh, caused uh, this this crisis, uh, Senator Dick Durbin, in a, in a radio interview uh, a few days ago, said that uh, it's hard to believe in a time when we're facing a banking crisis that many of the banks created, that the banks are still the most powerful lobby on Capitol Hill. They frankly own the place. Yes. Uh, as we approach the election, elected officials know the American people are enraged, particularly about the question of too big to fail, large institutions that aren't subject to the same rules as everyone else. At the same time, they need money for their reelection in this money-gushed politics system that we have. So we're engaged in a kabuki theater right now, hoping the material is too complex for the American people to understand, declaring victory, and yet basically encoding into law current practices of the banks. Every one of your listeners should ask the question, given this legislation, if the President, House and Senate pass it, will we be in a place where AIG couldn't have happened, Lehman Brothers couldn't have happened, Bear Stearns couldn't have happened, and more importantly, 9, 10 percent unemployment caused by the banking crisis couldn't have happened? I argue this bill does very little. And even Gary Gensler, who's probably the strongest element of the administration at the CFTC, argued yesterday at the Chamber of Commerce that it does not do the job. The end lo user loopholes in derivatives regulation, which is, to my mind, the San Andreas fault of the financial system. We're going to continue this conversation after break. We're talking to Rob Johnson. Uh, he is the former chief economist at the Senate Banking Committee, now director of the Economic Policy Initiative at the Franklin and Eleanor Roosevelt Institute, and Kai Wright, editorial director of Color Lines Magazine and a fellow at the Nation Institute. This is Democracy Now! We'll be back in a minute.